What's up guys, I'm super excited to take you with me today. I am on my way to a new piece of private land in North Central Ohio I just locked down and this will be the very first time I step foot on the property. I'm gonna get some trail cameras hung, do some scouting, shed hunting, try to get an idea of what caliber bucks are in the area and I'm gonna take you guys with me every step of the way, document the whole trip and explain to you guys how I attack a new property and uh, you'll see what I find. If you get any bit of value out of this at all, hit that thumbs up button for me. It helps me out tremendously and lets the YouTube algorithm know that this video is worth sharing and hopefully other people can see it and learn from it and uh, help more people be successful in the deer woods next year. But excited to take you guys with me. Stay tuned. All right, so I just got here. It looks pretty sweet. My first goal here is just to walk the property and see what it's like. So I'll probably sling a bag of corn over my shoulder and just get it across the field, drop it, and uh, and then do some scouting. The landowner is calling me here, so I'm gonna talk to him and I'll get back with you guys. All right, I'm walking through this muddy corn field and decided to carry one bag of corn with me and and I got four more once I get back. But I'm gonna get this out here, start scouting. And uh, it's a long walk. So I finally just made it all the way across this field into the woodlot and was pleasantly surprised how many tracks are on this side of the field. So what I normally do on a property like this, especially a you know, there's only about 12 or 15 acres of actual woods. Because I'm probably going to walk the perimeter and just see where they're, where they're entering and exiting the property. I'm not looking forward to carrying those other four bags because that was brutal. But there's already some good trails coming out of the woods here. Woods look really thick. Seeing some oaks. And uh, just going to walk the edge here, see where all the trails are. And, uh, and then we'll probably go more into the center of the property. But I'm pretty excited. This is... My first exclusive piece of property, you know, I don't own it, but I'm leasing it. So I have a contractual agreement and no one else can be out here. So let's see what we can find. So just get into the woods a little bit and there's this inside corner and there's just an absolute beat down trail. So this is probably gonna be one location that I put a camera. And since baiting is legal down here in Ohio, I'm gonna bait it up, just try to get as much action as I can while the bucks are still holding. And I kind of doubt all of them are holding, but just wanna get some type of idea of what's out here. I literally have no clue, never been in this area, but uh, already good sign, a lot of deer tracks, and uh, hopefully we can find more. So here's another really good trail. And it's actually, I'm, I'm basically on the property line. So exactly like I said before, I'm just trying to see where they're entering and exiting the property. As I look up this trail, I see a nice big rub. So I'm gonna go up there and check it out. But every time I get to a spot like this, I'm marking on my Onyx app and letting, you know, telling myself there's a nice trail here. So that way when I get home, I can look at it on my computer, study, and I kind of put the points together. And then that way, next time I come down and whether I'm hanging tree stands or whatever, I kind of have an idea of where I need to be. So super cool feature of Onyx is to be able to add different waypoints. So there's literally one that has deer trail, so that's what I'm gonna put right here. So I know next time this is a heavy deer trail and uh, you know, right off the neighbor's property on here. And uh, I'm gonna continue on here. The main part of woods that I can hunt is like an open wood lot. And then there's like 40 acres of field. But what I'm excited is about is this stuff behind me. It's real thick, briars and Buck brush is what we call it. Anything we don't know what the name is, we just call it buck brush. But uh, definitely I could see deer bedding in here. The neighbors is a little more swampy, so I bet a lot of them are bedding there. Um, but still moving through this property. Lots of crops around. And uh, in these you know, places like Ohio, in certain areas, there's not a ton of wood. So all the deer have to cram into these smaller wood lots. So I'm expecting a lot of deer to be in here. You know, I expect it to be pretty dense. Um, but this stuff real thick. The snow is really starting to come down. Kind of hoping it would stay dry, but so I just got all the way across this property, and it didn't look like this field was planted this year. 
but I'm guessing it will be next year. Um, so there's basically crops on both sides and decent amount of cover, still pretty open, but it also has uh, a water source that has this creek running through it, which was another feature that I liked. So, you know, not a ton of cover, but there is cover, food, water, all on this little property. And uh, hopefully, if we play our cards right, we'll be getting some... My goal is to shoot one big buck off this property this year between me, Lindsay, and my dad. If that happens, then it'll be a success. I'm still following kind of the property line. And there's this pinch point between this field and that field. And I don't have access to hunt either field, but I do have permission to hunt the woods here. In the rut, the deer have no choice but to either travel through the fields or if they want to stay in the cover, which they generally do, they're going to be crossing right through here in between these two fields. So definitely going to put a stand right here. Not right here, right here, but in this general area. Great pinch point. And, uh, Probably gonna put a trail cam here as well since it's such a highly traveled area. There's a lot of good trails through here and pretty excited gonna keep moving this field nice and green still. I'm also obviously looking for sheds. There's nothing cooler than finding sheds. It's like a physical connection with the animals that we're hunting. And so I'm gonna follow this fence row and you know, a lot of times when they jump the fence it'll jar them loose and they'll be laying right there. So. I'm going to work my way up this, still continue doing what I'm doing, seeing where they're entering and exiting the property, but... But I'm going to be watching for sheds next to this fence. You can see right here, the fence is lower. I don't know if a tree fell here at one point, but that's where all the traffic is going because it's easier. Deer are just like people, they'll take the path of least resistance. So if they don't have to jump quite as high, they're gonna cross there. That's exactly what you see here. Here's an even better example of that. Here, the fence actually is all the way on the ground where I'm at. So it's tall, 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 and then nothing. And then right here, you get the big trail. As I'm working my way down, this is the field edge side that I started on and I popped out in the corner and now I'm walking the inside edge of it. And the whole way down here, it looks like they stacked brush up, whether it was from the field or wherever, there are piles and piles of brush. And deer hunting 101, anytime there's an obstacle, on either end of that obstacle is going to be an increase in deer traffic because, you know, I'm sure a deer could cross this. They, again, like I said earlier, they take the path of least resistance. So they're gonna walk to the edge of this, wherever there's a gap, and go through. And I'll keep working my way down, and as soon as I get an edge, I'll show you and I guarantee there's a trail here. This is a perfect illustration of my point. So all along the side, basically on both sides, there's piled up brush, and while well, a deer is very mobile and they could jump it or walk over it, they don't want to, they're lazy just like people. So here's a gap, and here's a huge trail. That's also a way you can manipulate deer travel. If they're going somewhere you don't want them to be or you want them to be closer to your tree stand, say you had a tree stand over here, you could you know, make brush piles here so they are forced to walk around closer to your tree stand. And uh, you know, if I have a tree stand down in this corner, I'll probably clear out the brush to allow the deer go back and forth there and increase the traffic through where I want them to go. So a lot of stuff you can do, here's an old old truck or something. If you don't have upland bird hunting pants, I recommend you get some. They're not that expensive. Probably can get a pair for 40 bucks at any outdoor store, but walking through these thorns, you don't even feel them, it just brushes right off. Where if you're wearing jeans, it's cutting you. Hurts to walk through. I just got into a little bit thicker piece. You can see all the cover. And immediately, there's more rubs than I can count. 
probably two or three dozen and I gotta figure out why that is whether my experience where you find a lot of rubs it's generally a high doe traffic area or it's like right where the bucks bedding and I could definitely see bucks bedding in here again there's not a ton of cover anywhere in this area so they're gonna be in the best best area this is nice and thick for them and uh, you know I want to do some walking around here see if I can't find some beds but tons of rubs and uh, I got to figure that out though so I'll put drop a camera here because I got to figure out if they're just traveling through here if this is where they're bedding because obviously I don't want to put a stand right in the middle of their bedding area but I need to know where they're traveling through so we're gonna get a camera up here in a minute and uh, get it baited up and come back in a little bit and check might not be sheds but I sure love finding rubs like that just absolutely shredded man that's cool nice big rub it's getting me jacked up curious to see what bucks we get on cam here so this is actually corn it's molasses corn there's actually molasses all over the corn so I'm hoping it lasts a little bit longer than just shelled corn we'll see well, I'm gonna put my camera up high so nobody steals it and so the deer don't, don't steal it, see it. And I'm going to put it on this bigger tree back here. I've messed up a bunch of times putting on small trees and then when it's really windy the trees blow around and activate the the, uh, the camera and it takes false pictures. So I'm going to climb up here with my hawk helium stick and get this hung. It took me a little bit longer than expected but just wanted to make sure that when I come back, there's actually pictures of the deer. So, and to make sure it's all good and lined up. But on to the next one. So the best part about scouting this time of the year, and as you get further south, it probably doesn't matter as much. But in Michigan, especially, we get a bunch of snow. So if you wait too long, everything's covered in snow. Right this time of year, it's usually just a little bit of snow, if any. You can still see all the sign from the fall. And it's long before green up because in the summer, this is gonna be a jungle. I'm not gonna be able to see anything in here. But it's found this really big scrape. And you can see his looking branch up above. And I'm gonna get a camera hung over here and maybe that'll eliminate one of the bags of corn I gotta carry out here. The natural attraction, uh, kind of inventory the bucks here. So I'm gonna get a camera hung. It's, as you can see, it's a blizzard out here. I got uh, some aggressive plans after this. We'll see if it, if the snow keeps up, how ambitious I'll feel. But here we go. I am on my way home now, just wanted to recap my trip. My goals for today were one, to familiarize myself with the property because I had never stepped foot on it before. The second goal was to hang cameras so I can get some inventory of the bucks in the area because I have absolutely no idea what to expect. Uh, obviously I have high hopes for some big mature Ohio bucks, but only time will tell. I'll probably let those cameras soak for a month, month and a half, come back down and uh, see what we get on camera. So I'm super excited about that. It's very evident that there is a high deer density, lots of tracks, and uh, the only tricky part is going to be access, accessing the property. Being a smaller piece, it's going to be pretty easy to blow all the deer out of there. So I'm going to plan on knocking on the neighbor's doors and one, obviously see if I can hunt their land as well, but two, just see, you know, if I can't hunt it, maybe I can just access through their property and come in different ways with different wind directions. So we'll see what happens with that. Also, based off the conversation I had with the landowner, it sounds like he has some additional land that I might be able to either permission or paid 
might be able to get access to. Um, and he said it's right across from some giant park that has no hunting, so it might be might be a good idea. I've been I've been doing the public land thing for a long time and had a lot of run-ins. Usually around November, you know, there's so many people in the woods, it's, it's difficult to get away from people. And uh, I I vowed that I would get access to some some private land, um, whether it be permission or lease. And I'm still going to be working hard to knock on doors and get permission elsewhere. But I wanted to have a go-to place that I for sure could get away, have some preset stands, and not have to worry about other people ruining my hunts, be able to run my cameras. And uh, I'm pretty excited. So we'll see what happens this fall. But I got high hopes. And uh, this surely won't be the last video about this piece of property. So more to come. I would greatly appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button, the like button. It helps me out big time with the YouTube algorithm. I'm trying to build my channel and put out content for you guys. And my content's only going to get better and better. It might not be very good right now. I'll let you decide that. But I'm going to be working continuously to, to have better production quality and, and better quality content for you guys. I'm looking to add value any way I can. So please, please, please do me a huge favor. Help me launch my channel by hitting that subscribe button and hitting that thumbs up button. Leave a comment if you feel like it. But I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time.